Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura or Laura X Stitches and I'm back. <laughs> it's been two months I think. I think I've got March and April to catch up with you on. I think I was here at the end of February. Um, I hope you've all been doing really well. I will get into kind of where I am and stuff really quickly. I'm going to try and make this first part nice and quick so we can get into stitching but I'm in our nursery. Baby's not here yet. <laughs> um, she's not due for another four weeks, so we're all good. But I came in here because Matt's home today and um, it's kind of like the next best place to film, I suppose. Um, I've got light coming in this way, so we'll just kind of have to see how it works. And I'm on Matt's fancy schmancy camera, which picks up every detail on my face. And you can probably see that um, my skin's not doing well with third trimester life. So I do apologize for the insane detail that's happening right now. Um, where have I been? Well, oh, and by the way, feel free to skip forward. Um, I always have timestamps in the description. So if you want to skip forward, feel free to. Um, we went away for our honeymoon in April and we went right at the start of April. So I did say in my last one that I was going to try and come back before that, but I just didn't have time um, because we went the day of school holidays pretty much. And as a teacher, it was kind of like, working and then I was on holidays. <laughs> it was pretty insane. So we went and did our honeymoon, which was amazing. It was a lovely two weeks. And then the past two weeks, I've been finishing up at work. So I finished work on Friday. So now I'm on maternity leave. I've got a year off, which I'm absolutely so looking forward to. Um, I've been getting really, really tired, obviously, being at the end of a pregnancy. So <sighs> it's nice to have some time. So I thought I'd jump in this weekend and get a video done for you guys because um, I try and do these at the end of each month and at the end of this month we could have a baby <laughs> we might not so I'll either come back to you or um, if you follow Instagram you'll I'm sure I'll put on there if she comes a bit early so we'll have to see how we go but it's getting very very real almost too real it's crazy um, so that's been my life update it's been work honeymoon a bit more work and baby I guess um, so we've set up most of the room it's all looking pretty good, um, but a little bit, little bit more to do, so that's all good. So, stitching wise, has been pretty good. I've stitched most days since I saw you last, um, so that's been nice. I got a fair bit of stitching in on our honeymoon, which was really cool, and um, since then as well. So, I'll kind of go through. Um, usually, I go through my whips, uh, work in progresses in order of when I stitch them, but because it's been two months, I've kind of stitched on a few twice. So it's a little bit hard for me to go chronological. So I will just go um, with through some finishes. I've got three. I've got one new start and I've got, uh, I think four whips to show you as well. And then we'll get into some other stuff. Some other things that we've got to talk about. Um, a little bit of haul. Um, I've got a giveaway winner to announce. And two FFOs and then some plans because I'm kind of changing my stitching with the impending life change we're having so it's all needs to change a little bit so I'm going to go over that with you today so let's get into some finishes so the last time you saw me I was working on my last piece of the calendar series and for the life of me I can't find the calendar series that I normally show you um, it's the adorable animals year of adorable animals from 2017 from cross stitch crazy magazine and that is the giveaway for this week this month that I'm announcing so we'll get into that a little bit later but I was working on December and I did end up finishing that so there is December it's just on a piece of 14 count Ada from Stash nothing special at all <laughs> very quickly chopped up so I um, changed the order of these because they were in southern sorry northern hemisphere kind of seasons and obviously I'm southern hemisphere except for December I kept it the same because it's very um, Christmassy <laughs> so once these get FFO because that's one of my plans to do over the next couple of weeks while I'm not at work I will go through them all and kind of discuss my changes there's no color changes I didn't do any converting it's just the order and I put in the months at the bottom as well so that series is all done, which is really cool because I've been working on that since 2018 and I did a big um, hiatus on it. I just didn't do anything on it and then I picked it up this year, I think it was, and got that all finished. 
My next finish was a little bit of a surprise. I wasn't expecting to finish this one when I did. I'm just grabbing the details of that out of my journal from um, Black Horse Shop. So I wasn't expecting to finish this one in March, but I ended up stitching a fair bit on it and it got done. So I think I had five days on this and on the fifth day, it was finished. So this is Hufflepuff by Mandarinx Designs. I started this one on the 23rd of May, 2019 and finished it on the 10th of March, 2021. So not two years, which is cool, <laughs> but enough. Um, it's on a piece of Sparkly's 32 Cat Rhino and it was the fabric of the month. So I don't have, like there's no name for those. Um, so I'll pop in a picture here of what it looked like last time so you can kind of see how much was done to finish it. nicer so here it is all done there's Hufflepuff so I think last time I'm pretty sure I've done kind of this section and it was a lot smaller than the rest because these bottom pages except for the middle the two M ones are mostly half stitches and back stitch so it goes a lot quicker but this middle section is full of stitching. It's pretty intense. Now, under the tree, there's meant to be French knots. I left them out. Um, I just didn't think it needed it. I think it's meant to be like a snow thing, but I was cool with how it looked. But the rest is stitched as charted. There are blends. Being in Mandarin's designs, there are blends. Um, and that's just off Etsy, by the way. So yeah, love it. Definitely wasn't expecting it. Um, so it was really nice to get that one done and that was a medium piece ticked off for those that don't know I kind of um, sort my whips out by size so I full coverage large medium small and then there's a matte category which is my husband because he gave me a bunch of pieces so he gets his own category and I have another one but I'll, that's a new one <laughs> I'll talk about that later um, so then my next medium that I already had going was the witcher and the Witcher Silhouette. And I took this one away with me and I actually finished it while we were away, which was unexpected as well. This got um, five days over the course of um, March and April. So I finished The Witcher on the 14th of April. I started it on the 15th of May, 2020. So it wasn't quite a year. Um, it's from Own My Stitches Shop on Etsy. Now I don't know if she still has it um, she has reposted my finish as a story and I think there was a swipe up link or a link to something so she might still have it in her shop I'm not 100% sure this is on another 32 cap rhino from Sparkly's fabric of the month um, from June 2018 but there's no name for it um, but I will put in a picture here of where I was before and then I'll show you the finished piece So there we are all done. So heaps of black, like a ridiculous amount of black down the bottom. Um, that was really good plane stitching and hotel stitching. Um, it was a little bit tricky in the hotel um, because some don't have the best lighting, but mine weren't too bad. The two places we stayed at weren't too bad. But that's it all done. It looks awesome. I almost forgot that there's some bits that have back stitching that I forgot. <laughs> but then I remembered kind of as I was finished the black I was like right I'm not actually done yet I've got to do the back stitch so I did all that so it looks really cool I love the fabric that um, that's on it suits it really nicely and doesn't take away from the stitching there so there's the witch on my third finish for the past couple months so that means I have no current medium whips oops but I do have something lined up, which will go into implants. Uh, now I'm going to show you my new start. And this was the small start that I had spun on the wheel last time I saw you. And it was Sleeping Fox. Do I have... Yeah, I do. So it's this one down here. It's in a little series of four. I'm, I've already stitched the cat for my granny and I'm not stitching it again because we're not really cat people. So there's um, fawn, 
I think it's a squirrel and a fox that I'll be stitching. So the fox was chosen. So that's what it looks like. It's from Cross Stitch Crazy, November 2016, which is issue 221, if you are looking into that. This fabric, oh gosh, what is this fabric? Let me grab my journal again. This is the fabric we were given on the Midigong Stitches Retreat, and I don't know the name of it. If anyone went on that and knows, let me know. I forgot to look. It looks like a 32 count linen. It's definitely a linen, 32 count, but I don't know kind of where it's from. So this has had six days so far, and that's where it is. So I haven't stitched on this. I didn't stitch on this in April, I don't think. And if I did, it wasn't for very long. I started this on the 27th of February. So I think it was like the day that I recorded last. There's that one, it's very cute. I've just got to do the bottom part of the fox and then the back stitch. And then we're done. And I'm thinking that all three will fit on here. So I'm going to do that and then effort foam them all at the same time, which is fully finished them into probably hoops. I think on the um, example, they've wrapped the hoops in ribbon, which is tempting, or I could paint them, I'm not sure. So that's my only new start since I've seen you last. Let's get into my whips, my work in progresses. Ugh, excuse me, I get hot very easy at the moment, even though it's not that hot here. Um, let's start with my full coverage focus. Now I have three full coverage whips, but I'm only focusing on one until it's finished. It's my oldest whip at all, it's my oldest full coverage, and it's Epic Pofon. So this is the extended edition of Generation 1, so I'll put in a picture here of what it looks like when it's done. Now this one you can find by Googling. <laughs> this is how I found it. I found it on Reddit, so I, I have Googled before. Um, Epic Pokemon Cross Stitch Generation 1 Extended Reddit, and then it will come up. Otherwise, you can get the normal version um, from Sprite Stitch. It is free. And in the Pokemon Cross Stitches group that Amanda and I admin, um, someone has amazingly and very graciously uploaded the Pattern Keeper files for these for a lot of the generations, so you can use Pattern Keeper on it. I'll put in a picture of where I was the last time you saw it. Now, since I've seen you, I've worked on it. I worked on it for five days, focus in March, ten in April. Plus, I did some daily stuff. Now, in April, I was catching up because I have a about three thousand one hundred stitches per month. I'm trying to do to get this row finished, um, and because we were away for the first two weeks, I kind of just worked on it when we got back until I had that amount done. Um, so, since I've seen you. I have finished a page. So I'm also going to put in a picture here of what that looked like when the page that I was working on, which was page 17, um, was finished because I'm not taking it out of Q snap because <laughs> it's in the perfect spot. And I'll show you where I am now. So this is where we are. We're on page 18, which is the kind of middle page of the fourth row. So I have, I don't know whether there's light in this, but it's all pretty good. Um, so I've finished my March and April goals on this. So since you've seen it, it's had just over 6,000 stitches put into it. I will, I have already started May's goals and I'll talk about that in my plans. So that's been stitched on yesterday. So I've just got a few colors and bits to fill in here. A lot of it is blocks. And then I can get started on page 19 which means page 20 is next, which means the row will be done. I think my calculations are wrong. I don't think I had to stitch as much um, as I had calculated. I think I've added it up wrong, but I don't mind because um, with baby coming, I think I will slow down a bit, obviously. <laughs> so I don't mind as long as I get this row finished by the end of the year, I think we'll be good. That's every time on. Um, good times, good times, love that. Really finding my love for this again. I fall in and out. At the moment, it's love. <laughs> um, another piece I worked on is my matte piece. I did two days on this in March, and this is Grey Dragon. This is by Valenti Cross Stitch of Etsy. Um, not much to say about that. <laughs> Here's a picture of where I was last time. This is on a piece of random 18 count Ada from Stash. 
it's quite it's not stiff stiff but it's not the softest thing ever either um so here's where we are now after another two days on that so i've just kept working across and down obviously with my full coverages now i like to pick a color on the top row do it all pick the next one and keep going across and work my way down that way so i can see the full picture i used to park I tried diamond parking, a uh, diamond, diagonal parking. You can see here, it's just not for me. So I'm going back to that method. Pokemon's a little bit different. On Pokemon, I um, do all the black on a page first because it kind of surrounds everything. And then I do the colors. But on this one, I just pick a color and work down. There are not many colors in this. Um, so you get a fair bit done. That one hasn't, didn't come out in April and it's not scheduled for May. But who knows? But at the moment, it's not in my plans. But it will come back. Next one is my large focus piece. This is my oldest non-full coverage piece. My oldest large piece. It's by Sew Stitch. And it is Princess Collection. Um, yep. <laughs> Here's a picture of where it was last time. Since you've seen it last, this has had... Um, six days on it including three while we were away so three in April yeah three in March three in April the ones in April were when we were away it was meant to get four but it just didn't happen because we're on holidays I'm stitching this on a piece of 32 count even weave from sew it all in Australia I think it's called cloud green now when you last saw it I just finished Jasmine so here it is now and we'll go in and have a look at Aurora, which I can't say very well. It's like my own name. I can't say that very well either. So here she is. Let me get her better. She's got a big crease in her face, poor thing. I've done the top border. I hope that's going to focus for you. There we go. I've done the top border. I change all of the names to say their actual name rather than like the movie or the book. So it says Aurora instead. I've done all of the flowers around her. They each have kind of like a little decoration. So I finished all of those. Her hair's done. Um, her skin's almost done. I just forgot a color while we were away. So I've just got to do a bit of skin on her arm and I've started in on her dress. Her tiara's finished. So this is almost all of the first half of her done. Then the second half, the way these um, patterns are the top half is a lot it's not really a top half page one of each princess is a lot bigger than the bottom it's like her head top border her head and her torso and the start of her like dress or her pants and so that's kind of where we're at now so soon she'll be ready to back stitch that um, first page and then I can start in on her giant pink dress then I've got to stitch the border at the bottom and then she's also the end so there's another border that comes down here so there's a little bit left to go on her, but it's certainly achievable soon. And that would be awesome because I started this in 2017 and I really want it finished. Um, it might go up in the nursery here, it might not. Um, Matt and I like Disney, but we're not like huge, huge Disney people. So it's cute though. That's the thing, it's very cute. So it definitely could. We'll see. And then my last whip that I've worked on since I've seen you is the one that's probably had the most work apart from Pokemon and that is my baby sampler. Now this is from, let me find out what store it is from, I can't remember. Stitches Lover Shop on Etsy. Um, it's called the Hello Baby Jungle Sampler. I started on the 17th of February. It's on a piece of 18 count Diamond Ada that I just had in the stash that I got from my grandma. Here's a picture of, hopefully I put in one of what it will look like when it's done and also where I was last time. This has had a lot of work on it, as you will see. Um, in March it had four days, it, four days, yep, and in April it had eight and I worked on it last night as well to start us off in May. Here it is now. So as you can see, <laughs> I've done, oh sorry, I've got things falling around me everywhere. Let's get rid of this one. I have done a fair bit on this. I finished all the wording for Hello Baby. 
I have done the elephant, the tiger and the monkey and all the leaves. I've just got to finish the lion. That's what I was working on last night. I've got to do his face. Then next to the lion is a giraffe. And then underneath that is where her details are going to go. Now, all I'm going to do is the, there's like some little green dots, like a line that goes through. So it'll have her name, then the dots, and then her date, weight, and time that she was born. Um, it has length, but I'm changing it to weight. Um, so I'm going to just do the, those dots and leave the rest. Yes, we have a name picked out, but I don't want to put it on there until she's officially here. So this will be like a finish for now until she's arrived. I really love it. It's quite actually quick to stitch. It's lots of blocks of color, which can get tedious, but sometimes you need that. Now, um, the writing and all of the leaves I have re, oh, sorry, I've converted into silks from Silks For You. They're all from their colors of the month ones. So if you'd like to know what they are, let me know. Otherwise, I think I spoke about them in my last video. I might have mentioned what they were. So that's that one. So yeah, that one has probably had the most, most work on it because um, of her impending arrival. <laughs> so there's my whips. I'm pretty happy with um, what I was able to get to, even though I was away and working and stuff like that. So I was pretty happy with those. Let's get into, um, I'm going to show you my two FFOs first. Then we'll go into haul and giveaway and then plan. Okay, so the first FFO, well, let's start that again. Both of these FFOs I'm not 100% happy with, but one of them I'm definitely not changing because <laughs> I can't be bothered, but it was a really, really good learning curve for me. So I decided to do another um, canvas finish with my staple gun, which I love doing. And I decided this time to do ribbon around the edges rather than a pom-pom trim or another trim and do a couple bows. I have learnt that I don't like ribbon around the edges. I would prefer something that comes off a bit and frames it a bit nicer, but that's okay. So I ever fold four in the bush by um, Ink Circles. And this is what it looks like finished. I don't, I'm not 100% happy because it's not centered 100%, um, but that's okay. So around the edges, I've got a pale pink ribbon and then I made two bows and put them on top of each other just to give it a bit of something. I don't mind that this isn't amazing because it's never going to go to anyone. It's just going to be displayed somewhere. I think I'm going to have to make a wall of cross stitches somewhere because I have a bunch of these little ones now. Um, I do love it. Like the stitching looks great. I stitched it in, I think it's 3799 and then used a bunch of bow silks I had for the rest. The bows don't look too bad. I um, followed some kind of bow tutorial and then like Frankenstein it to, <laughs> to go with what I wanted. That's okay. I just really don't like the um, ribbon around the outside. So I will be going with some kind of trim for my next canvas finish, which will probably be the calendar pieces. I want them all on little canvases and then have a little easel to put them on. This isn't too bad. I'm not 100% happy, but I'm not 100% sad either. The next one was a little bit of an experiment. So this kind of goes into haul. I purchased a um, needlework display frame thing from a shop called Itchy Stitchy. I think it's in Queensland. And I was purchasing some etoile threads as well at the same time. So I had a look at this and I thought, I reckon I've got something that could go in that. So I purchased it. Now I'll show you what it is. It's a Sophie shadow box frame. That's what it's called. I think it's a 24 inch hoop. And it looks like this. So all you really do is you, there's like two hoops, like a normal hoop you would kind of stitch in and you put it in and put the small hoop behind. It is not very tight. You can kind of see that it moves a bit and the way the back is atrocious. So don't like come for me, but I just did that running stitch thing where you pull it tight and um, all you do is have these little metal hinges things that kind of keep it on there one of them is a bit loose so i think i need to tighten it up uh, with a screwdriver it's fine for this piece i don't mind this is a piece um 
I did for a birthday sale I did I think probably in 2018 and I have had it finished for a really long time and I've never done anything with it but I was totally fine with it going in this hoop I'm it just um, hangs up like that I think the benefit of these is that you can easily switch things in and out so if I was to have like say a monthly series you could quickly pop it in and then pop it out again there's no um, like stapling or gluing or pinning you just put it in and then you put the other hoop in you just have to be okay with the tension not being very there but I'm okay with it for this piece these hoops could easily be painted there's also a square one you could get as well um, I don't mind it though it looks okay and it will be fine when it's hung up um, wherever I'm thinking probably our next house because we do not have room in this house to hang things up um, that are just for me so they're my two FFOs. I don't mind them. I didn't get any FFO done, FFOing done in April um, because we were away and work. But now I'm off work, I think I'm going to try and do some um, here at the start of May. FFOing, by the way, is fully finished object, which means that you've stitched it and you've got it ready to display. That's all it means. Sometimes people frame things, sometimes people make cushions, that kind of stuff. It's whatever you want to do. And some people don't ever FFO and that's okay as well. It's all good. Now I do apologize if I sound like I'm running a marathon. I just can't breathe. I have a baby just crushing my lungs. You know how it is. <laughs> so let's get into some haul. Um, so I purchased from Itchy Stitchy that frame and some of the 12 threads. Um, I won a giveaway, which was so cool. I think it was in April from Mary Ashcraft. Um, I just hope I said that right. <laughs> I thought I said it wrong. She is a beautiful uh, floss tuber from America. And so thank you very much, Mary, for the awesome gift card. I got an Etsy gift card, which was really cool because I'm an international subscriber <laughs> and not someone from the US. And I totally get it because postage sucks and it's expensive. So um, on Etsy, I still have some money left over. I just haven't uh, purchased anything yet with it. But I did purchase two patterns. The first one, did I even write it down? Yes, I did. Thank goodness. Is a wedding wreath. And this is from Cross Stitch EU. Um, so I'll put in a picture here what it will look like when it's um, done whenever I get it started and this is going to be like a little wedding sample from that night we kind of had a quick look together I was thinking of like a monogram of a bee because it's our last name um, I was thinking a few things and then we kind of saw that and it matched our colors a little bit so we're going with that one so that would be nice when I get that done and the other pattern I bought was the temperature tree by stitching money and I know you all know what this is but I'm gonna put a picture in anyway and I will be talking about this in my plans because it is going to come up in May. So I was really excited to get that. Um, it's going to be a really cool piece that I think you'll enjoy watching come together. Now, other bits of haul I actually have with me. So I have an order from JK's Cross Stitch Supplies that I received. I'm just going to take out some bits and pieces that aren't very interesting. Oh, look! There's the adorable animals calendar. I don't know why it was in there. There you go. That's what I was talking about before. There's some atoll I bought. And I think JK, Janet throwing some scissors because I don't remember buying these. <laughs> so thanks Janet. Um, I could have, who knows. I purchased some Q-Snap arms. I bought the, by oh, elbows they're called, 11 inch and an eight inch to make an eight by 11. I have a Q-Snap cover for this but I don't have the actual Q-snap, so now I have another one. I have a really big one. I, have, I think I have like the 17 by 17 or the 14 by 14 with the extension on it. I never use it. Um, I really only use eight by eight, 11 by 11, so I figured, let's do a mix. There's that one. And what else did I get from her? It's like a lucky dip. Oh, I bought a bunch of B5200, because I ran out. And I think these are some Yes, just some floss rings. I've started using these to um, put up my like overdyed flosses and silks and stuff. So I've got a couple more. Yeah, that's all I got from her. Yes, the only other bit of haul I have is from a stitch in time. These are my threads of the month. I get the Gast Gentle Art Sampler Threads threads. <laughs> and I've just signed up as well. I got offered a place in a week's dry work. So next month, um, in May, I will get both of those. So I'm going to go through March first. 
This is blackboard. Blue spruce. Bubble gum. Uh, burlap. Burnt orange and brown bear. So they're the ones from March and these are the threads from April. So we have cast iron skillet, butternut squash, I hope it's focusing all right for you guys, further in blue, buttermilk, Buckeye Scarlet and Briar Rose. So we're getting through the B's and I think the start of the C's. I don't think there might be some missing. If there's any missing, they just put them in the next one if they are struggling to find them or something like that. So, yes, I'll start the weeks wherever they're at and add some more threads to my collection because I like to use them. Okay, let's do the giveaway for the Adorable Animals calendar. That's this one here that I just found. <laughs> so all I did was ask you to um, say the word adorable. So I've got it on my iPad here. All right, it's all loaded now. We had five people into that one. You can't see that at all. Just trust me, I pre pressed it. Okay, we have MT. Congratulations, MT. Here's what MT said. Love your videos as they are and have asked the same question, but you're engaging in the stitching is adorable and enabling and that is what matters. Thanks, MT. So if you could just um, send me a message on Instagram or in my email, which is in the description, I'll also comment on your comment from the last video. And I can get that sent to you as soon as I can leave the house, which is probably this week. Because <laughs> I'll actually have energy, which is very exciting. So that is my giveaway done. I'm not doing a new giveaway this month just because of the month that it is. Um, and I don't want to promise a giveaway and then not come back for like four months or something and then forget about it. So hopefully next time I'm here, I can get one for you guys. I've got a few things to give away. So now we can move into plans. Let's have a chat. So um, I'm not doing any mania stuff. May is not the month for me to be doing that. <laughs> Especially this year, um, it could be very life changing. It could be a lot of waiting. So I didn't think that mania was a good idea. I don't think I did it last year. I remember doing it in 2017. I had five starts. Don't remember what I did the year after, but um, hopefully next year I can get back in on the fun and do some mania, which would be good. Good start. But I am loving all the videos. I'm probably about a week and a half behind. I've got so many videos to catch up on, but I think I'll be fine. So for May and for the foreseeable future, I am going to be moving away from the acrostic, from the 24 hours acrostic planners. Um, I am still using the planner to plan all my stitching and stuff. I think it's a great resource. I'm just not going to do the acrostic. Um, I'm moving into must do's and can do's. So my must do's are my goals that I've got to get done and my can do's are my options afterwards. So um, I'll get into those in a second. Now just to go over kind of what my whips are looking like at the moment because I've had a few finishes, um, I'll let you know what is happening with them. So my current full coverage focus is Epic Pokemon, obviously. My large is the Princess Collection. I don't have a medium on the go at all, so that means I don't have a medium focus right now. My small is the Sleeping Fox. My matte one is the Grey Dragon. And my special, which is my new category, because <laughs> I've got a few of them coming up, is the Baby Sampler. So, what does that mean for May? Well, my th I've got three must-dos in May. I must get my Epic Pokemon goal done. And I figured out that I've, if I do 222 stitches a day for 14 days, it'll be done. So, I'm doing that first and then I'm working on my other goals. So, like yesterday, I did, I think I did like two, I did a fair bit over because I had a length of thread I wanted to finish. So, I did that wrote down how many stitches I did and then I moved on to the baby sampler. So that's kind of where my um, thought is for Pokemon is get it kind of done early in the month and do it every day a little bit rather than a big focus day and that kind of 
keeps me going on that, which is awesome. I like having some momentum on episode one. Um, so I've just got my like journal right up on my face. My next goal must do for May is the baby sampler. I need to get that as a finish for now because I want it ready to go when I actually have the baby. So I really don't have much left to do on that. I'm thinking the next couple of days that'll be finished. Um, and then I'll put it away until she comes and then I'll get it 100% done. Once that's done, my third must do is to start the temperature tree piece from Stitch and Money. Now I wanted to grab a thread that I got in my thread thing. I think it's this one. Yes. So I'm going to stitch the tree in brown bear. That looks really red. It's not, I promise. Um, that's by Gast. I looked at the DMC and brought it into my like stash and this was the closest one to and I wanted it to be kind of exciting <laughs> rather than just a bunch of one color browns. So I'm doing using that one for that. Um, I'm also going to show you the fabric. So for this piece I decided to take inspiration from the designer, Stitch and Mummy Sarah, <laughs> um, and do one over one. Oh my goodness. I'm going to do it on a piece of 28 count fabric and this is from Pole Stitches Designs and it's called Awakening. Yes, it's a 28 count Joe one. I actually stitched a piece on it. Can you see it? That one, my um, Evolutions wheel thing. That's on the same fabric. And it's a beautiful piece and it's all multicolored and it's probably going to get really washed out. You can kind of see it. It's pastely yellows, purples, blues, and pinks. I just thought it'd be really cool for a baby because this is going to be another piece for the baby. Let me explain to you what I'm doing with this one. I'm going to be stitching it, um, like I said, for the baby. And it's going to be for the first year of her life. So what I want to do, um, my goal for May, is to start it and get the branches done for May and June. Because she's due kind of in between the months, I wanted to get both of those branches done so that when she does come, I can get started whenever I get started. Um, so... I'm going to I'm going to do that. I'm really, really pumped about it. Um, so I will stitch the first leaf for the day she was born and I'm going to back stitch it. So I don't have to change anything. Um, so it will kind of go around back to um, May next year. And that will be the first year of her life. And then I'm going to put at the bottom her name, like so-and-so's first year or something like that. And just backstitch a little alphabet in there. So that's going to be on this fabric with this is my brown and then I'll choose the higher temperature one because of where I am. But yeah I'm going to do that one over one and I'm really excited because I haven't done one over one on 28 count before and it's going to be so cute and I'm really pumped. So <laughs> um, that's going to be my third must do in May. So I think I'll get a start on that pretty soon which I'm really excited for. So that's going to that almost doesn't fit into a category because it's going to be a whip for a year and I actually can't finish it earlier because I need the temperatures. So that won't be my special one, my, my special category after the baby sample is done. When she gets here, I'll start the wedding wreath I showed you for our wedding sampler. So now that I've done my three must-dos, I actually have four can-dos because, because I'm off work and for, <laughs> I shouldn't have the baby here for a little while. Um, I will be able to get some other stuff done. So first things first is I'd love to finish Princesses. Now that is a bit of a big ask. Looking at it again, there's a fair bit of stitching there. Um, so I at least want to get a little bit going into that to get it closer as I can to a finish, if not to get it done. If I finish Princesses, then my next large piece is the Kings and Queens of the UK. I've showed that a few times. So that would then take over that spot. Um, but I probably wouldn't work on that in May. My second thing would be to get a new medium start because I don't have a medium piece. So if you follow Instagram, you follow Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I think it was last week or the week before I did a bit of a poll over a few days for you guys to pick my next medium start. And it ended up being between Yellow Submarine and this one, and this one won. And it's Evening in the Shire by Maria Brocco or Cute Patterns by Maria. So this one won. So this will be my next new start for a medium piece and I'm going to be stitching it on this piece of Colour Cascade Fabrics 
It was her February 5th of the month in January 2018, but I think you can still buy it because it's got a name. It's called After the Rain. And that's kind of what we're looking at. It's a blue, um, oceany kind of blue, but it, then it's got purple modeling through it. So I thought it was perfect for a kind of night sky effect because this one is on a blue fabric. So I thought it was kind of nice, but not overtaking this beautiful pattern. So that will be my new start. Um, it is a 32 count. I think it's a Lugana. It doesn't feel like Joe Blow. It feels like Lugana. Um, now, I was going to do it on a smaller, like, that would be quite tiny, but there's some bits that need three strands of backstitch, and I figured 32 is probably the lowest I want to go. I don't think there's any blends, but there is three strands of backstitch. So I just wanted to kind of make sure that still looked okay. So that will be a can-do. So I'd like to finish Princesses first, but we'll kind of see how I'm going with that one. Next would be to finish my small uh, The Sleeping Fox. So that would be my next can-do if I was to get um, Princesses finished and get a nice start on Evening in the Shire. I don't know what a nice start is, maybe a few days. And then my next can-do after that would be to have a small start. But let's spin the wheel. <laughs> Even though this probably isn't going to happen, I probably overshot all my goals, but I don't care. So for those that don't know, I have a the app Tiny Decisions and it has a wheel in there with all of my smalls in it. And I spin it whenever it's time for a new small start or when I'm kind of close to one so that I can do it with you and we get excited together. Now, a lot of these are older ones that every time I see them, I'm like, oh, that's exciting. A couple of times ago, I got really, really pumped about one. I don't remember what it was. Um, I've just added in the No Planet B cell from Crowds Factory, the March, April and May parts. I haven't put them on there. Um, so the way it works for any series is I put all the parts in, but if it comes up, I'll just start at the first one. So if, let's say, for example, No Planet B April was chosen, I would go back to the January release and start it that way and just take the January one off. Um, same with a few other ones. So let's spin and we'll see what comes up. I can't see anything here. Raccoon Cabin. Oh, okay. So Raccoon Cabin. I don't think you can see that. Raccoon Cabin is from the Frosty Forest series. So I'll have to see where I'm up to with that one and which one will come first. And then I'm going to start another one of those. I think I've done two on that one. So I think I'll be working in the top left corner for that piece. Very cool. So that will be my new small start if I get to it. <laughs> I've got a few other things to get finished first, but I'm thinking um, this week will be a little bit busy because I'm fresh off work. I've got a little bit more energy. I'm going to get as much done as I can in this room and out of the house. And then the next couple of weeks, I'm going to slow down <laughs> and stay at home as much as I can and just get ready to have this crazy baby. So <laughs> um, I think I'll get a bit of stitching done in the next couple of weeks for sure. So yeah. I've got some can-dos, I've got some must-dos, I've got a few new starts looking like they could pop up, a couple of finishes. I'm pretty pumped. This is going to be a good month um, for stitching. Thanks very much for bearing with me while I got through that video. There's going to be a bit of editing to do because things are falling and stuff, but that's okay. Um, and thanks for bearing with me while I've had my little break for a couple of months just to get through some life stuff. But we're back. Um, hopefully I will see you at the end of May. <laughs> we'll see what happens. If not, the next time I see you, I might have someone to show you. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to, she's ever going to be on camera or not. I'm still tossing up whether to post her anywhere. <laughs> As a teacher, I get a little bit paranoid about stuff, but we'll kind of see how it goes. And um, there might be there might be a new edition when I next see you, which is insane. But thank you very much for watching. Um, I am catching up on all your thoughts tubes, and thanks to those people that have said they've kind of gone back and watched my videos and they've caught up. It's pretty funny to think of me in 2016 <laughs> filming videos, so, um, or 2017, whenever it was. But um, that makes me really happy. So thanks for joining in. And uh, I'll see you guys whenever I see you next. Make sure to follow me on Instagram for more kind of like daily updates and stories and stuff. And um, yeah, have a wonderful, wonderful May. Have a great mania and I'll see you when I do. Bye everyone.